everybody, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. If you're watching live and you're wondering why is the show so late today, it is because my guest is from Australia, where it's already the morning of the next day. So when we have a guest from certain time zones, we have to do it a little bit earlier, otherwise they'd be broadcasting in the middle of the night for them. She's going to be talking about how she reversed her multiple sclerosis with a plant-based diet and making an amazing, delicious, healthy recipe, a chocolate mousse tort with fresh berries. Please welcome all the way from Australia, Rebecca Stonor. It's so nice to meet you. Hi, Chef AJ. Thanks for having me on your show. That's my pleasure. I love your shirt. Thank you. Yes, Just Eat Plants. That's my website. And it's kind of my motto because it seems to be the thing that we need to do more of to um, prevent all these chronic diseases we've got happening around the world. You think people would get it by now, huh? I just think people don't know. Um, and I think people like you are great because you're getting it out there to most of the people. Um, and every little bit we do counts, I think, just sharing the information with people. I think that when you have a story of healing, though, that really does get people's attention. I think so. Yeah. So I should probably share a little bit about my story. Um, I'd love about, to hear it. Yeah. About five, nearly six years ago, um, I had a whole lot of symptoms and all the tests uh, showed that I had multiple sclerosis. So I actually lost vision, almost complete vision in one of my eyes. All the colour vision went. Um, I had all sorts of real weird sensory um, issues with my fingers. I found it hard to do up buttons lots and lots of different things going on in my body and it turned out it was MS. So I have a background in science. I've worked in science for nearly 20 years and I knew how to read the research uh, articles. So I went to the internet, which you probably shouldn't do, but I used Dr. Google. And um, yeah, I found that MS is very much a lifestyle disease. So very much like heart disease, diabetes, those sorts of things. Diet is the number one factor, saturated fats in particular. Um, so I changed my diet pretty much overnight and since then I've been refining it, trying new recipes um, and trying to share the information with other people as well. So when you Googled it, what, what words, I'm just curious, what words did you put in and what words popped up? Yeah, so I, I pretty much diagnosed myself before I had um, my neurologist appointment. Um, I, I looked up the symptoms of optic neuritis, so that's what it's called when you lose vision in your eye. And it showed that it was a, a symptom of MS. So I then just Googled, like, is there anything I can possibly do? So I would have used words like multiple sclerosis, diet, multiple sclerosis, exercise, all those different things. Um, and I came across a program called the Overcoming MS program, which was developed by an Australian doctor who has MS himself called George Dillonek. He's written a book and um, it just incorporates all the science uh, in one place about how to reverse um, and halt pro the progression of the disease. Did, did, did you ever meet this doctor? No, but I went along to one of the retreats. So there was a place in Victoria in Australia called the Gawler Foundation that ran MS retreats. And um, it was amazing. It was life changing. I met about 20 people uh, with MS and we learn all about science. We did a lot of meditation. So actually I probably should show the book. I've got it here. Um, if anybody's looking to find the information that's on here, it's called Overcoming Multiple Sclerosis. So the program is called OMS. Um, and yeah, it's great. So it covers, it's a seven step program. I think diet is the main one Then it goes into exercise. Vitamin D is really important for people with MS. Um, exercise, I said, and sleep. Sleep's really important as well. So is the doctor that wrote it plant-based himself? Yeah, so it, the program is actually whole food plant-based with seafood. So I've eliminated the seafood um, just because I thought I really didn't need it. And knowing that seafood often contains a whole lot of um, toxic chemicals, heavy metals in the oceans, I just thought that's another thing I can probably drop out of my diet. Um, I've been doing really well since. I haven't had any relapses um, in the five and a half years and my MRIs are still stable. So yeah, doing really well. That's fantastic. Congratulations. Have you ever heard of the work that Dr. John McDougall did with OSHU in Oregon, the, the research where he did with on multiple sclerosis? Yeah, yeah. So I follow um, Dr. McDougall quite closely. He also had an interview with Roy Swank. So Swank is one of the pioneering researchers um, in multiple sclerosis. And he saw that people who ate a very high saturated fat diet, which is most people in the Western world, um, 
did worse. So he did a study of, I think, uh, 34 years of about 150 people. I think half of them follow the diet really closely, and that was uh, less than 20 grams of saturated fat a day, and the other half didn't. And so the half that did follow it did really well. And by the end of the study, they were all still walking around, having living a normal life. Um, those who did eat more saturated fat didn't do so well. Apparently 80% of them died of MS-related causes. So, yeah, it just showed that it just was such clear evidence that, you know, the best thing to do is cut out the saturated fat and animal products are full of saturated fat. So. But I'm, I was just Googling that seafood is not free of saturated fat. There are types that are low. So I'm just curious what the reasoning for having seafood for, in the diet would be for this doctor. I don't know. But I kind of assume that it's um, a little bit of compliance with the diet. So if you get somebody on a standard Western diet that's eating a lot of chicken and red meat and processed meats and all that sort of stuff, cheese especially, for them to cut it out, having one component of what they used to eat in their diet and perhaps going out to restaurants to be able to, you know, order some seafood might be able to help them. The diet, the OMS diet does also include a bit of olive oil and I've excluded that as well because that contains a little bit of saturated fat as well i think you should write your own book because your diet sounds better than the one this doctor wrote yeah i you know i've been thinking of it but you know i have a day job i have two small children um i have my instagram and facebook and i'm also doing um live cooking demos with people i had a woman from canada contact me recently and we did a cooking demonstration over zoom so they were cooking along with me and it was fantastic and I do um, cooking classes in person in Adelaide and South Australia as well. So, yeah, I'm pretty busy. Uh, and a book, I guess, is something that um, will be on the card sometime. Wow, that's fantastic. So you're going to make a recipe today too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I've got some ingredients in front of me. Um, I'm going to be doing especially a, a raw tart. So it's not low in calorie density, but it's very high in omega-3. So the other really important thing for people with MS and really anybody is um, getting enough omega-3s in your diet. So this is going to use walnuts as a source of omega-3s and chia seeds. So I'm going to make a crust for the tart and I'm going to make a mousse to go in the middle. And then I have this beautiful bowl of berries and fruit that I'm going to decorate it with. So well, I can't wait. We've been getting a lot of raw recipes this week and they're just so beautiful. Yeah. And well, in South Australia today, it's really warm. It's 31 degrees Celsius. So I think that's nearly 90 Fahrenheit. So not turning the oven on is probably a good idea. Yeah. I love that because that was warm where I live too. And that's exactly my thinking. If you can do it without the oven, eating without heating, I call it. Yeah. <laughs> good idea. So should I get started on the crust? Oh, absolutely. All right. We can talk while we're doing this anyway. But um, So I'm going to use a couple of pieces of equipment today. I've got a um, food processor and a high-speed blender. You could probably do it all in a blender, but I figure the food processor sort of makes the crust a little bit more crumbly. So it's really simple. Um, I've got some medjool dates, and I just want to talk about medjool dates. Everybody loves them, but... When I go to the box of medjool dates um, in the supermarket, there are two different types. I find in ours, we, there's really soft, squishy ones, and there are these hard, kind of wrinkly ones. I like the soft ones for these sorts of things because they're really sweet and they blend up really well. Um, the hard ones, they're a bit more dried out. They're great, but I prefer to use them, chop them up finely and put them through curries or casseroles or something like that. It's gonna be cooked because they hold their shape a little bit better. So. So today I've got about a cup of the soft ones. Put those in. Just going to throw it all in together. A cup of walnuts and some raw almonds. Again, almonds are really low in saturated fat, so it's one of the things on the OMS diet that they recommend. So I tend to avoid a few nuts. Uh, I would say um, macadamia nuts are something I don't tend to eat because they're high in saturated fat. Um, yeah, walnuts and almonds are really good. Hazelnuts are very low in saturated fat as well. Okay, I'm going to make a bit of noise. Now, it's getting pretty crumbly. Um, I keep doing it until it's really, I can push it together because it's got to be pushed into the tart. So I'm just going to go a little bit further.
Right. I think that's good. I don't know if you can see, it's kind of like a crumbly mixture. Just going to pour that into my tart case. So you can use anything um, as a tart case. You can use something rectangular or square. I've just got this glass one because it looks quite nice. So I'm going to put that mixture in the bottom. So Rebecca Mandy has a question. If you find it easy to eat and to live this way, and does your family eat the same way? Yeah, so they do. Uh, there is a genetic um, predisposition to MS. So I don't have any blood relatives with MS, but I have um, both my mother and father have autoimmune conditions as well. So there's a genetic component to it. So my children eat the same way. They might occasionally go out and have some vegan ice cream that's not you know, whole food plant-based, but when we're at home, definitely uh, we are whole food plant-based. Um, and yeah, my husband as well, he's a scientist and he got on board pretty quickly once I started because he just saw that the evidence was there for it. So yeah, and we all eat this way at home, which makes it easier when I'm preparing food. Now, the reason I've got this, this is a um, silicon sheet. I don't know if you've seen these before, they're for wrapping food in or putting over bowls. I'm going to wrap my hand in it because this mixture tends to get a little bit sticky. Um, you can use a plastic wrap or clean wrap or something like that. So I'm just going to press this into the pie dish. You could do it with just normal uh, fingers, but I would wet them a little bit first. Make sure it goes up the sides. Yeah. Doesn't have to be perfect, it can be a little bit rustic. This mixture is also good just as um, bliss balls or something like that, just um, rolling them into little balls. Okay. It's a bit of a workout as well. How old are your kids? Uh, so I have two. Um, Isabel is 13 and Hugo is eight. So we've had the Easter egg hunt this morning. Hugo uh, knew that the Easter bunny was coming. So we did that nice and early. Um, and they've gone out for a walk now. So that's good. Okay. This is looking good. So how old were you when, they, when you changed their diet? Did they put up a fuss or did they go right along? My 13 year old did a little bit. Um, so they probably transitioned about a year after I did. Um, so let's say they've been eating this way for four years. My little boy, he doesn't really remember. Occasionally he says, you know, Mum, do you remember that time we went out and we had um, calamari that was fried? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I remember that. But, <laughs> you know, it's very, very distant memory for them. Um, but, no, they're both completely on board now. And I actually asked them the other day if, when they leave home, when they're old enough, when they're, you know, young adults and they've got their own money and they leave home, are they going to go out and buy like a, and we call it, and show you, a meat lover's pizza. So it's a pizza covered in cheese and meat and that's it, no vegetables. And they were horrified. They just went, oh, yeah, we couldn't think of anything worse. So I was like, yeah, that's okay. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they know that I have MS. My daughter says to me, um, you don't have that anymore, but actually, you know, it's there in the background. If I do go back to the way I was eating, more saturated fats, um, I have no doubt that it will rear its ugly head. So, okay, so that's looking pretty good. That's the tart base. So just set that aside. Um, you could probably put it in the fridge, but it's it's hard enough. It's it's got enough structure that you can just pour the mousse in it. So we'll get started on the mousse now. Got my high speed blender. Again, super easy. I'm going to put uh, some chia seeds. Doesn't matter which color. You can have the black or the white. Uh, they they really. I mean, they're very high in omega threes, but have this amazing binding agent, so they make things nice and moussey. So I'll put those in. Some cocoa. Uh, I use cocoa in this because it's got a nice flavor. You can use cacao, which has a higher antioxidant. Um, content but cocoa is just a nice flavor as well some more dates and i've got this is about 
two and a quarter cups of soy milk. You can use any plant milk you like. Um, we just prefer soy because it's got a little bit creamy texture. Put that in. Now, I'm going to blend that up first and then I have another ingredient. I've got an avocado just for a little bit more creamy texture. So put that on. does it's weird do you, do you get the same kind of equipment in australia i see you have the vitamix are you able to get things like the instant pot or the breville air fryer there uh i'm pretty sure they're all available if not we buy them on amazon and we can have them shipped over here um but yeah vitamix i've had this for I don't know, four years i use it every day probably multiple times a day for smoothies and sauces and things and i know there are other models and i'm not like saying vitamix is the best one to get there are other brands um, but yeah, we've got all the different things in Australia. Let me just give this one more blend. Rebecca, Tracy says, are you on any medications for your MS? So no, not at this stage. Uh, the OMS program does say you do everything you can to do well, everything it takes. So for me, diet, exercise, meditation, vitamin D, um, stress reduction, all the highest priority. I was on medication when I first started um, because I, was, you know, I had to stop the um, progression. And it did work, but I didn't like the potential side effects. So um, I slowly came off of that. And I sort of hold it in my back pocket that, you know, if I do need to, um, I won't hesitate and I'll take something. And I do have MRIs every six months. I do um, monitor it very closely. Um, yeah, and if you want to do this, I'll definitely go back on it. There are, like, just everything's changing. There are so many different things on the market now um, in terms of medication. So, yeah. One of those things that's always there to and, and just make sure, please speak loudly. Some people are having a little bit of trouble hearing you. It could be because the camera's far away. So just speak nice and loud and clear so we don't miss anything. And there's a question from JL when the Easter egg hunt, I'm guessing you didn't use actual eggs. What did you hide in the treats in? Or egg-shaped um, bliss balls go out of a similar sort of um, mixture to that and I will sort of cover those in cocoa so that's a bit of a treat um, so yeah just a few little chocolate we have a, um, a chocolate maker in Adelaide that is you know super high quality and I think the antioxidants in the dark chocolate is um, pretty good for them so I don't eat it 
I think I'm one of the only people over Easter time who doesn't have any um, any chocolate, but yeah. So I'm just going to put this in the tart base. When you first mix this, it's quite thin and runny. And look how thick it becomes. Uh, it's the chia seeds sort of binding together. Just going to put that in there. So my kids have actually used this instead of like a chocolate spread on toast or something like that. They'll have um, this sort of chocolate mousse. It's delicious. There's a question if from Alyssa. Are your kids ever given a hard time at school or other outings with friends for how they eat? Um, hi, Alyssa. No, uh, I haven't heard them say that they've been given a hard time. They might sometimes feel a little bit different. They, um, they're never excluded. Uh, if they go to birthday parties or friends' houses, there's always something they can eat. Um, and they're old enough now that they can know what to choose. But actually, my son is quite outspoken and he'll be the one saying to his friends, um, who are eating a ham and cheese sandwich, he'll say, do you know I'm going to live longer than you because I'm not eating that stuff? <laughs> so I think if anything, um, I don't know, they've got the knowledge base, they, they feel quite confident that they can speak up for themselves. So just going to spread this around. So this tart I'm actually taking, we're going to my parents' house this afternoon um, as a bit of a family gathering over Easter, and this is what we're going to be having, so... Gonna be delicious. So you can see how thick it's become. And a lot of people would probably want it a little bit sweeter. Because we don't eat a lot of um, you know processed sweet foods, well, I don't eat any. I think our taste buds have changed. So this is actually plenty sweet enough for us, um, just with the dates. I think if you taste it and you want a little bit more sweetener, maybe a dash of maple syrup, but really the dates are good enough. The dates have all the fibre and all the nutrition as well. So, okay. It's looking good. Now, this is the fun part, the decorating. Um, I think we've had a really good season in South Australia for berries. So raspberries and blackberries have just been delicious. We do um, go and pick blackberries not far from my house. I live in the Adelaide Hills and there's quite a lot of blackberries everywhere um, at this time of year. But, yeah, to buy them in shops have been really cheap and delicious as well. So there's no rules with de decorating this. Just do it however you like. I'd like to do it fairly randomly. Um, I've got some homegrown figs as well, which I'll put on in a minute. Where we live, it's a Mediterranean climate, so berries and figs and those sorts of things do really well. So I'm just going to pile them up. Got some blueberries. You can do the whole tart or just keep it in the centre. I like to keep it in the centre so you can see a bit of the chocolate mousse on the outside. I tried to find some edible flowers in my garden. <laughs> I was walking around just before, but it's the end of summer. It was actually the beginning of autumn and just, there's nothing flowering at the moment. It's really sad. We're waiting for some rain. We haven't had rain here for so long. All right. That's looking pretty good. Now, a few pieces of my homegrown figs. This is a bit of contrast. Do you get figs where you are, Chef AJ? We, we do get figs, but what we're really known for are dates because it's called the date capital of the world, Indio, California. We actually have a whole festival and county fair built around dates here. Really? 
I find, I think because my taste buds have changed, I find dates so sweet. Like if yes. I was to eat one whole date, I'd need a glass of water with it because it's just, it just seems so sweet. I love them. They are um, so sweet. And my children love them with um, a little bit of peanut butter or almond butter inside. If you cut the date open and. Yeah. Yeah, and then and you freeze it and it tastes like a Snicker bar. Oh, <laughs> wow. I haven't done that. Don't tell them that because that'll be, <laughs> they won't want anything else. We have a question from Mandy. What does Rebecca like to do for exercise? So I do a variety of things. I try and mix it up because, you know, otherwise it gets pretty boring. Um, I, my day job, I work in the city uh, in Adelaide. And so I drive with um, my bike on the back of the car about halfway because I live in the hills. So everything's really windy. Um, and then a ride into the city. So that's a great form of incidental exercise. I also do some strength training. I go to the gym, um, do a bit of that a few times a week. And also yoga. I love yoga. I'm trying to do that as often as possible through the whole COVID lockdown. Um, my workmate, Jane and I, we did yoga every week. We made a, a scheduled time. We said we we're going to do this every week. And we did the same session I think it was only a 20-minute session just to sort of see how much we could improve over the whole COVID lockdown. And, yeah, it's great. It's a great way to get some exercise. And it's actually really hard. I don't know how many people out here do yoga, but it's um, if you do it properly, yeah, it's really challenging. Any particular type of yoga you do? I don't know, to be honest. <laughs> um, no, just anything that, yeah, we find... Um, I think we're probably trying to do something that's a little bit more challenging. Um, I haven't done the hot yoga yet, um, Bikram yoga, but, yeah, it's something I like to try, particularly in the colder weather. Okay, so I've got a few mint leaves. This is one thing I could find in my garden. I'm going to put those over. So I think that's looking pretty good. Oh, maybe a couple more here. My kids love raspberries. Actually, if I ever go to a party and there's a fruit platter and it's got raspberries on it, I know my daughter, she tends to sit there and eat every single one because she loves them so much. But Yeah, berries, are, the blackberries are incredible right now where I live. Um, the berries... The berries that we pick around here are delicious. If we've had a good season, it's not too hot, and we've had a bit of rain, yeah, they're, you know, they look like this. They're big and juicy. Um, but the flavour is incredible. And I try and go out and um, pick punnets of them and put them in my freezer. So I've got a, you know, so it keeps me going into the winter. But this year there weren't as many. It was The, the fruit that was there was beautiful, um, but, yeah, weren't wasn't as prolific as it has been. So... All right, I'm going to hold this up without dropping it. There you go. Can you see that? Uh, so easy, really, and so versatile. I mean, I've made a similar sort of mousse with raspberries, left out the cocoa and just put raspberries, so it's a nice pink mousse. That's beautiful as well. Super thick, um, really high in omega-3s, really good for the kids for their developing brains, um, and, yeah, it was really low in saturated fat. So I actually did a calculation. I probably should say that the overcoming MS diet isn't necessarily a low fat diet, but it's low in saturated fat. So saturated fats are those ones that, you know, they cause problems for people who have a genetic predisposition to heart disease. For people with MS, um, similar sort of plaques form in people's brains and um, it's from the saturated fat. So keep the saturated fat really low, um, but we still have healthy fats in our diets like omega-3s then the evidence shows that, yeah, we're going to be well. And whether it's heart disease, diabetes, other autoimmune conditions, um, that tends to be the thing that people need to do. That looks stunning. I mean, that looks like something you'd get at a bakery or a restaurant. It's absolutely beautiful. But you can see how easy it was, right? It was just, and, and not very expensive. I mean, the nuts, you know, they a little bit but really if you were to buy this if you had to go to a shop and buy this i'm sure you'd spend a whole lot more um super easy and it didn't take you long to make there's a question from helene why do you do the avocado separate uh okay good question helene um i think because i've done it a number of times if your avocado is really ripe 
and you blend it from the beginning, it can warm up and it's almost like it splits, like some of the oils come out of it and it can look a little bit different. So I like to blend the chia seeds. They need a fair bit of blending. Like if you have a taste halfway through, it's still a little bit gritty. Um, but if you then keep blending, it becomes super smooth. If you don't have a high speed blender, I would recommend maybe soaking them the night before in the plant milk so that they become like, softer and your blender can break them up. Um, but then so blending that and then adding the avocado, it becomes really nice and smooth and creamy rather than splitting and having that sort of oily texture to it. So yes, good question. Yeah. There's a few people watching from your neck of the woods, actually. How do you like that? <laughs> yeah. So we have um, in Adelaide, we have a group called Plant Powered Adelaide. I think that there are plant powered pods all around the world and plant pure communities. And so we catch up quite regularly. We've got a Facebook group, which I help um, moderate. It was started by Helene Brooks. And uh, we get together and we have shared picnics. Oh, you should see them. They are incredible. So the only rule is whole food, plant-based, no oil. Um, and then, you know, no coconut and that sort of stuff as well. And we have these shared picnics and they're incredible. We just have a big long table. We've had about 30, 35 people come Everybody brings a dish. We have a talk. Um, so if anybody's in Adelaide and they'd like to join, just um, go to the Plant Powered Adelaide page and I can let you in. That sounds great. So tell us, like, what does a typical day look like for you with, with, with your food? Okay. Well, my day actually starts at about 5 a.m. Um, we are early risers in this house and I need to do my meditation practice before the kids get up. So I'm up really, really early. Um, and then, yeah, breakfast, I, I tend to eat, uh, I guess, a little bit differently to most people. I don't eat oats. So I have a bowl usually with lots of berries or fruit. Um, and my starch component is something like uh, sweet potato. I love the uh, red flesh, no, yeah, purple flesh or the white flesh variety of sweet potatoes in my breakfast. For me, it's like cake. So I have that cooked and broken up in the bottom of my bowl um, berries and usually flax seeds on top of that for the omega threes. Um, then uh, lunchtime is usually a big salad, so I go to work and I <laughs> my salad bowl is a salad bowl. So my lunch bowl is you know like what you would use to share a salad with a number of people, and I just fill it with leafy greens, sometimes some um, uh, brown rice or chickpeas, something like that. There's lots and lots of vegetables and I do a little bit of sprouting at home. So I usually have some fresh broccoli sprouts or something like that in there as well, or lentil sprouts. Um, and a dressing is really simple. Usually just sometimes just lemon juice um, or balsamic vinegar. If I want to be fancy, I'll use a bit of Dijon mustard in my um, dressing. So, yeah. And then if I'm hungry in between meals, always a piece of fruit. And the, the thing about eating this way, you probably know as well, Chef AJ, is that you get to eat in abundance. So, you know, I have this huge bowl and people think, you know, how, how are you going to eat all that? But, you know, it's easy. It's, it's low calorie density and it's, um, yeah, delicious. And then oh, dinner is probably um, something that I share with the family. So we do lots of curries and dals. Um, in the summertime, we'll do things like um, the rice pepper rolls, Vietnamese sort of style so yeah lots of things and just large volumes and don't have to go hungry which is great what was your diet really that bad before you were diagnosed with ms uh looking back yes and i think i ate just the standard western diet so it'd be the same in the us um we were told to eat you know uh, meat for protein and dairy for calcium so you know the standard um food pyramid which i think we still have in australia um and i ate what i thought was healthy because i would probably eat low carb and more chicken breast um and just looking back it was yeah definitely high in saturated fat and processed foods i just you know i had at the time my son was two so I was pretty tired, I was sleep deprived and I would just eat anything that I liked really. Um, I was always a little bit overweight. So eating this way, I've lost 22 kilos. So that's about 50 pounds. Um, and 
yeah, it, I, you, I can put on weight if I eat a lot, especially sort of high calorie food, um, but it doesn't tend to happen very easily. And yeah, I'm never going to be up to the same sort of weight that I was before. Right. So you, you, were, I can't believe you were, you were 50 pounds heavier. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I um, can't believe it. Do you have a, I mean, do you have a photo? <laughs> I do. Um, I, I, I have one, I think, on my Instagram page. And we call it my um, my fat photo. Um, Nothing you so, can show us now. It's just when I see, when I meet people, I, it's just, it's hard to believe. Yeah, I can see if I can find it. it you know what? Um, it doesn't, I'm tall. So I don't know if you can tell. Um, for a woman, I'm fairly tall. So it doesn't sort of show uh, like you would expect. You have such um, a beautiful, by the way, just, you have a beautiful kitchen, the plants, the white, it looks, it looks wonderful. Thank you. Um, doesn't always look like this. I have to, you know, clean up occasionally. For some reason, yeah, we, I can share, you can have a screen. I can do this so that you can share a screen if you like. Yeah. Yeah. I did not know that you had uh, lost 50 pounds. That's, you know, it's that's funny. Thing. Um, I don't tend to I, I don't tend to remember that I think for me because the focus is on MS um, and being able to walk is the most important thing um, but when yeah when I tell people that they yeah they're quite surprised I think that being tall I can carry more weight without people noticing like you know when I tell people I've lost um, 22 kilograms they they never remember me as being a heavy person. Um, but, yeah, definitely feel a lot better. Oh, do you know what? I can't find it. Um, I'll have to send it to you, Chef AJ, and see if we can incorporate it somehow because um, or I'll put it up on my Instagram if people want to follow me and I'll put it there. Yeah, we put in the show notes all the links to everything if they want to Yeah, follow you yeah. on different social media platforms yeah I know I did I was interviewed by plant-based news which I think is a UK based um, group and uh, yeah they definitely had my fat photo in there and they had a photo so they did a comparison I ran a um, it's called the city to bay fun run so it was a 12 kilometer fun run never running my life but you know when I was getting fitter and healthier I thought I'm going to run this thing so um, Plant Based News has a picture of me before and just after the race, and yeah, the, you can see the difference for sure. Um, but yeah, I just I, I can't imagine ever being that heavy again. I have actually one thing I do have pre um, changing my diet is we still have chickens in our garden. So we've got a vegetable garden, we've got chickens, we used to eat the eggs, but we don't eat them anymore. Um, the chickens are just our pets. But occasionally I buy a, a bag of chicken food for them and it weighs 20 kilograms. So I carry it and it is so heavy. So that's not even as much as the amount of weight that I've lost. It is literally so heavy I can barely walk. And I think I used to have that all over my body. How could I, how did I walk? No wonder I had sore knees and sore feet and I was so tired. Um, but, yeah, it's always a great thing to, once you've lost weight, hold it again. I, sometimes I um, I pick up my son. He's afraid he'd be heavier than twenty kilos now, but like, oh, that's how much I used to weigh. So yeah. Wow. Well, and there's some comments. People saying your Instagram is lovely, and they want to know if you have a garden. Yeah. So we do. We have a vegetable garden. Um, it's between seasons. At the end of summer, you know, it's really dry here in South Australia. We can't wait for some rain. I always grow my own leafy greens. I try and have as much kale and um, collard greens is another thing that I'm growing. It's not common in, in Australia to be able to buy collard greens, but to grow them is fantastic. I saw Chef AJ, you had a, somebody doing collard wraps recently and, yeah, just delicious. So I always have herbs on hand. I try and have some edible flowers. Um tomatoes we've grown a few sort of tomatoes and I've got fruit trees lots of fruit trees here in the Adelaide Hills I had a good crop of cherries this year um so yeah I love it and I think just being able to grow your own food you can see how hard it is I don't buy organic produce 
all the time. If I can find it and it, you know, looks great, then I'll buy it. But it's often quite expensive. So to be able to grow your own greens, you can see how many animals love to eat them. Um, I share my kale with my caterpillars and different things. So um, you can see how heavily sprayed a lot of these things are that you buy in the shops to keep those bugs off. Wow. So there's a question from Marjorie and it's, have you ever talked to Dr. Saray Stancic featured in the movie Code Blue? She also reversed her MS symptoms and has been helping patients to do the same. Um, I have seen the movie. So a couple of years ago, there's a group in Australia called Doctors for Nutrition. They held a conference in Melbourne in Australia and they premiered that video, I think of that movie when it was just released. Um, I actually spoke on a panel prior to the movie just about my experience. Um, there were a couple of doctors on the panel as well talking about diet and MS. So yeah, I've seen the movie. I'd love to connect with um, Dr. Stanzik as well. So yeah, I, her story is incredible. Um, you know, it's funny, my daughter always says to me, mum, your story is not that, not that interesting. It's not that exciting. Because I guess I didn't have the same symptoms. Like somebody um, like to, to Stanzik, she could barely walk and she was in a lot of pain and everybody's MS is really different because it depends on what part of your brain or your spinal cord is affected. Um, so for me, it was vision, cognitive impairment and lots of um, sensory issues. But yeah, I mean, if somebody can be at that level of disability and reverse it, we're dying lifestyle. It just shows you how powerful it is. So a comment from the Woodland Gardener. Bravo, I have MS, was diagnosed 25 years ago at the age of 25. Becoming plant-based six years ago has been hands down the best thing I've ever done in regards to my health. Yeah, I know. And it's great. Well done. Um, I just wish more people knew it. But it's funny, you know, I'm in a few Facebook groups that people talk about the MS. Some of them follow a program like this. Others don't. Um, some people just don't want to know. Like I'll share this information. I might take a photo of this tart and share it with the, one of the MS groups. They don't want to know because they don't want to give up the foods that they love so much. I mean, we all know that dairy is addictive and um, a lot of foods, you know, stimulates those pleasure receptors and, yeah, they just don't want to know. But I'm trying, trying to share the information with as many people as possible. Do you ever co uh, coach people with MS? No, not at this stage. Um, I guess it's something I have to look forward in the future. But, yeah, again, I'm super busy. <laughs> <laughs> or what about or maybe write a book? Yeah, I will put that on my to-do list. <laughs> that's funny. I put that on my to-do list and it took like 50 years. But yeah, that's <laughs> fantastic. Because people, I think people would really appreciate your story. You know, it could inspire a lot of people. It, it, Linda says, I thought you can only stop the progression of MS, but not reverse it. Uh, so from my understanding, um, the brain is amazing. Um, I still have lesions. So it's like scar tissue in my brain or bruising. And some people it fades and they go away. Other people it stays there. You know, the scar on your body um, can stay there your whole life. Your brain will adapt. And a lot of this, well, all of the symptoms that I had before have gone. So my brain has changed and grown in a way that all of those symptoms have gone. Um, but, yeah, there's a lot of stories of people reversing their MS so halting the progression of the disease is really important. Um, but the symptoms that they've had, I think through really good nutrition, stress is a major thing as well. So reducing stress, vitamin D supplementation, all of those things um, just help reverse the damage that's been done. So. Congratulations for what you've accomplished. I mean, just even losing 50 pounds, even without a mess, that's amazing. Yeah, and when I was diagnosed, I just... I mean, it was horrible. And if you haven't been diagnosed with something like this in your lifetime, you don't understand the, just the fear. You know, fear is a great motivator for change. Um, but I thought to myself when I was diagnosed, what if I get diabetes on top of this? What if I get heart disease or cancer or one of those things? So eating like this, even if, I, even if MS isn't completely reversed or halted, Hopefully all of those other lifestyle diseases I'm never going to have to deal with. So, you know, I think 
I like the OMS program says just doing everything you can possibly do to be well is important, whether right. you've got MS or not. I know, because we really don't necessarily need one diet for heart disease, diabetes, MS. It's, it, you know, I mean, a whole food plant-based diet, it's pretty miraculous in what it can do. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, the more you learn about it, the more fascinating it is. And, you know, it does, you can't stop me trying to share the information. And a lot of people I know as well, they just want everybody to eat this way. And, you know, sometimes I go out, you go to the supermarket and you see people filling their trolleys with all those foods that are just so bad for you. And you want to tell them, but you can't. You just have to lead by example. Trolley, is that like a shopping cart? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's cute. That's cute. You know, I, I understand people want to eat what they want to eat, but you would think if they had a, a disease as serious as MS, they'd at least try this just to see if it would alleviate some of the symptoms. Yeah, and I think that's what I've heard sometimes before, that people will try it, they'll do it for maybe six months and they haven't seen any change. It took me about six months of eating this way for my optic neuritis to resolve and my vision to become better. So it takes time. I mean, I was 40 years old when I was diagnosed. So 40 years of eating a standard Western diet, it's taken some time for the diet to stabilise the disease, I guess. And um, you can't just try it and go off of it. I guess the word diet sort of implies that people are doing it to lose weight or doing it for a reason and they're going to go off of it. Um, but you've got to kind of stick to it for life. And that's what the OMS program says. It's like it's a lifestyle change for life. And, yeah, you just wouldn't go back. And that, the other thing is that people who do go back, um, they have cheat days or if they, you know, just slip into their old patterns of eating, quickly relapse and have problems. So, you know, the disease is still there, but it's not progressing because the inflammatory foods are not there to sort of help it along, I guess. Yeah. Well, if you think the doctor that inspired you would like to be on the show, let me know, because it does sound interesting what he's, what he's preaching. Yeah, sure. I'll write to him and see if he will. Um, yeah. But yeah, he's done really well. And they do retreats or education sessions all around the world. So if anybody's interested, there's a website called overcomingms.org and you can get all the information there. You can find out about the book. Um, there's also a book written by George and some other people called, I think it's called Recovery Stories. So it's just basically about 12 people who had pretty severe MS, did all these diet and lifestyle changes and had really excellent results. So yeah and I guess there's hope out there the other thing when you're diagnosed with something like this it's horrible um and it's just nice to hear that there's a bit of hope so yeah well congratulations I love these kind of stories they're my favorite yeah I, I, I just wish I had somebody who gave me the hope when I was first diagnosed I had to kind of search the internet for information you know there weren't any documentaries out this book was out but um there wasn't a lot of information. So hopefully, you know, people can look at my recipes and it's not horrible food. Um, when people find out that I don't eat meat, I don't eat dairy, I don't eat chocolate, um, all the things that I don't eat, they say, well, what can you eat? You know, what's left? Um, beautiful food like this, <laughs> you know, packed with nutrients and flavour and it's not a diet of restriction. Um, it's definitely abundance and delicious food. So my Instagram account, I try and share as much of that as possible just to give people a little bit of um, just incentive and just ideas of what to what to eat. Well, maybe there was nobody that you could find, but now people can find you. Yeah, and, you know, there's others like me as well. Um, there's a few podcasts around. I catch up with a bunch of women in Adelaide and, you know, people are looking for groups in their local area um, we are a group of people following the OMS diet and yeah, we're all doing really well. Um, the woman who runs it, her name's Pam. She has been following the diet for probably 20 years. She's in her sixties now. She's fitter than me. She still runs five Ks every weekend and exercises during the week. And yeah, she's doing really well. So, um, I don't know. I just kind of, I don't think there's, there's no other choice, really. Um, if you don't want to change your diet and you want to progress, then that's one thing. But, yeah, that just wasn't for me. So, 
Great. I just saw a question from Rory about MS. Hold on, my little chat. Oh, here it is. I have MS and I've heard conflicting advice in regards to gluten and lectin avoidance. Can you please give your opinion? So um, I avoid gluten only because um, my dad's a celiac and celiac disease runs in my family. Um, and it just was something that I didn't really want to develop on top of MS as well. I don't think you need to avoid it, though. I think if you have celiac disease, if you've had the test and, or if you have some sort of intolerance to it, um, you can avoid it. The other thing is lectins. I don't think there's any science in that. I think that um, eating beans and legumes and lentils and things like that that are apparently high in lectins are still they're so beneficial for you. Um, and populations of the world that eat lots of, of, of legumes do really, really well. So as long as they're well cooked, uh, it's not a problem. So, yeah, I don't think there's a lot of science behind the lectins. I think there's a lot of misinformation. You know, I, I have done over to your Instagram page because I was just curious if I could find a before photo. But instead, what popped up was a picture of tiramisu. <laughs> yeah. So somebody challenged me recently and it's, oh, could you make a tiramisu? To be honest, I don't think I ever ate it before I changed my diet. I might have once or twice, but, you know, I just saw that cream and everything. It was just so heavy. Um, but I thought I'd give it a go, and I did, and it was delicious. Uh, I've made it, look, it, it knocked my – just looking at the photo, it looked amazing. Yeah, so cashews are one of those things that are just so universal to make a cream sort of base. I also make a part of that tiramisu with silken tofu, um, the coffee sort of chocolate layer, I blend up silk and tofu with dates and a bit of cocoa and yeah, so delicious. Oh, beautiful. When, when, when's the cookbook coming out? Oh, <laughs> that's on my to-do list as well. Um, yeah. 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 All these things, all these things will happen. It's just a matter of time. Oh, wow. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story. You know, at first I thought, well, we should just put the recipe in the title, but no, it's really important for people to, to find this if they're searching on YouTube that you can reverse or if, even if the word isn't reverse, arrest, whatever they want to call it, you know, but, but improve MS with this diet. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, I think overcoming MS is the right sort of term that um, just doing everything you can possibly do. And whether it's MS or not, it uh, doesn't matter. And, you know, I always say that it's easier to prevent a disease like this than to reverse it. So if you haven't been diagnosed, start eating this way. Um, most of your viewers probably already are, but yeah, it's the best thing to prevent anything from happening. You don't want to go through your life, develop all of these um, markers of chronic disease and then have a diagnosis. So sort of start early. That's why I try and prevent it in my kids as well. So maybe we'll call it overcoming instead of reversing. Yeah. Yes, yeah. so we'll, yeah. we'll change that. In the, yeah, we can change that in the show notes. I, yeah. um, um, Magali says, could you make the dessert you made with carob instead of chocolate? Yeah, sure. I love carob. And actually, I do have that from time to time. Um, I usually compare the saturated fat contents. If I look at boxes of cocoa at the, at the shop, um, the lowest saturated fat content, but carob's even lower. And it has a little bit more sweetness as well. I love carob. It probably has a little bit more of a caramel sort of flavor to it, but yeah, absolutely delicious. Right. And Susan says, could we substitute the nuts in the crust with oats? Just make an oat date crust. Definitely, definitely. That would work just as well and be even lower in fat. Um, I do like the walnuts though. So if you go no nuts because of, you know, heart disease, that sort of stuff, that's fine. Um, but yeah, walnuts are really great really nutritious food. Oh, uh, Daria said, making the best with MS. That almost sounds like a great title for the book that's on your to-do list. Okay. I'll take note of that. Thank you. Well, thank you. This was a beautiful presentation and such an inspiring story. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, Chef Adrian. Thanks for letting me share my story. Um, it's really nice to have a platform and have people who listen. So yeah, just come on over to my um, Instagram and Facebook and come say hi. And maybe you'll come back and make tiramisu sometime. Yeah, sure. I can do that easily. And I probably should say I'm doing a cooking demonstration in Adelaide. So if any of those people who are watching here in Adelaide, I'll be at the Adelaide Central Market on May 14th. That's part of, there's an Adelaide Food Fringe event. So I'll be cooking. I've just decided um, it's a buttered chicken style dish without the butter and without the chicken. Um, so it's like an Indian curry 
and I'll be doing a dessert that's a little bit spicy. That's all I say. If you want to give me that information, I'm happy to put it in the show notes in case people are searching and they, they live there. Okay. Sure, no problems. That would be great. Yeah, maybe like before Thanksgiving, that would be it. like, I mean, I would think that would be, I mean, I know everybody thinks pumpkin pie for Thanksgiving, but man, tiramisu, that's the best dessert in the world. Okay, all right, let's, let's make a date. Absolutely, we sure will. Thanks so much, Rebecca, and, and congratulations on your tremendous success. Thank you. Sure, and thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow because it's Easter and we have two amazing shows for you. If you're on my mailing list, you know that the first show at the regular time of 11 a.m. Pacific time is a cook along. We've already sent out the ingredient list and the shopping list, and we're going to be doing an entire Easter meal live with four of the best SOS free chefs, Chef Katie May, Chef Ramses Bravo, Kathy Fisher, and Elspeth Feldman. The menu looks amazing. And then for those that prefer a more raw, we're going to do a raw food Easter recipe at 2 p.m. Pacific time. So we'll have a day full of celebrating with healthy, delicious oil-free whole plant food, just like we did today with Rebecca and the beautiful berry tart. Maybe show it one more time just to say goodbye as close to the camera as you can. Okay, here you go, you can see that. I'm gonna put it in the fridge to make it nice and chilled before our afternoon tea today. Wow, just the way you decorated it was gorgeous. Thanks again, Rebecca, take care. Thank you.